Hi, Joel Lightcatcher here, and I've got a special guest. Uh, this is John Loy, uh, and we're in uh, Boca Raton, Florida. And I've been here a few times helping John out with his trike, which is a HP Veltec uh, Scorpion 20 Plus. He had a flat tire today, and it just turned out to be a, le a leaky valve, a real easy repair. But anyway, um, John has a very interesting story of how he came to uh, recumbent trike riding, and um, well, I'll let you tell the story. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it's it's a long involved story. Uh, I was quite involved in sports in high school and college, and in uh, my early thirties, I took up tennis. Oh, and by the way, how old are you now? Eighty-four. Eighty-four and still on wheels. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll, I'll be uh, eighty-five come July. So. Uh, I, I took up tennis and, uh, and running, and at age 55, I moved to New Zealand, oh. and I gave up tennis, but I continued running until I was uh, 62 and came back to the United States. And uh, then I went jogging, and then I went walking, and walking five, seven miles, I got plantar fasciitis. So in 2006, I bought a uh, hybrid bike, uh, which I rode on a local bike path. And you were about how old then? Oh, I, in 2010, I was uh, 72. So you were a late bloomer to cycling. I was a very late bloomer. And what it was, uh, in March uh, 2008, my wife was teaching a, a night class as a professor of statistics. And I was at Borders Bookstore. And I took off a book called Miles From Nowhere, a uh, round-the-world bicycle adventure by Barbara Savage. Did you buy that book? I uh, bought the book. And, and we'll probably show you the book in a little bit. And uh, it was the very first book I read on bicycle touring. And uh, she had just finished the book uh, when uh, she was out riding a bike and was killed uh, in an accident. This was? Uh, I think that was way back in 1983. The book, she had just finished the book and it hadn't come out yet when she uh, was killed. Uh, but it was the first book I'd ever read on bicycle touring. And uh, the next week at Borders Bookstore, well, my wife had her night class, I picked up a, another book uh, written by a professor in Oklahoma on s someone who was a noted uh, a tourist on a bike back in 1884 or something. And so all of a sudden, I got uh, hooked on the idea of, of touring and cycling. With antique out-of-print books. Yeah, and uh, what I did is, uh, again, in the spring of uh, 2008, I subscribed to Adventure Cycling. And I've subscribed to it now for, what, 14 years or so. And, uh, and then in 2010, I actually went out and bought a road bike. It was a giant uh, Defy composite, I think, and uh, a great road bike. Was this the expensive one you told me about? No, no. Uh, it, 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 was, it was not that bad. Uh, this is 2010. And then in 2012, in uh, January, uh, my wife and I were out in California, and in San Francisco, I got in touch with a fellow I'd been on email with who was a cycle historian. And he invited me by to see his collection on bicycle touring. So I came by and uh, my wife went out shopping and spent the afternoon with him. And uh, in the afternoon, my wife had just come back from shopping and his wife had just come home from work on a bicycle. And uh, we were invited out to a French dinner with him, and I discovered that uh, she was a, a, a member of the Bicycle Adventure Club on the executive board, and that she was a, a bicycle tour leader. And she said, John, if you join this Bicycle Adventure Club next week, uh, I'll put you on the wait list, and you can come uh, and take my tour in Mallorca in May. Mallorca is where? In Spain, in Spain. Off, the, off the coast of Spain on an island. Uh, it's very well known for, for pros who train for, for cycling and so forth. And uh, 
So, uh, in May 2012, at age 74, uh, I went to, to Mallorca, uh, took my first 10-day, uh, two, 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 two-week uh, bike tour. At and, 74, you did a two-week bike tour. Yeah, uh, and, and that was my very first. Uh, I've, <laughs> now, I've now been back to Mallorca two more times. I've cycled in Mallorca three times, but I've now cycled in Europe uh, 20 times. And this is on two wheels. This is on two wheels. Yeah, I've cycled in Europe 20 times. And, and you're on a normal upright bicycle. Upright bicycle. Uh, one tour, um, well, my second bicycle tour uh, was in France in 2012. And I, I took, my, uh, took a folding bike from the United States, a Bike Friday folding bike. Uh, but since then, I've rented uh, a road, uh, uh, road bikes in Europe. And I've cycled now in 13 different countries. Wow. Uh, I've only cycled in one country. <laughs> and uh, so it, uh, it's just been great. I was booked for uh, uh, four bike tours in 2020 in Europe. And they were, were canceled because of the pandemic. And then in the fall of uh, September 21, uh, I've uh, was pulled off my road bike by a, don't hard to describe by a fishing hook. I'm sorry. There was a fellow. You got hooked. There, there I got hooked. There was a fellow uh, near the bike path, fishing in the canal, and when he flipped his cast, he caught me with a hook, in the, and, uh... and pulled. No, just caught my shirt, and pulled me off the bike. And it was a, <laughs> it was a very a very gentle fall. Uh, but I had a little pain. So anyway, uh, I spent uh, a year with non-invasive uh, pr procedures. I had some, had some epidural shots. I had ablation of my lumbar nerves. So this was your low back you got hurt? Yeah, and my th three, well, th three Where did you trunks. fall? On your butt? On your head? On your I shoulder? Just, I just really fell on, on my side. I didn't think much about it. And uh, this was at 74? Uh, no, this was just two two years ago at, at, oh, at, at age, age 82. September, at eight, September 21. At 82. Yeah. Well, at 82, uh, you <laughs> fell off your bike because a fisherman hooked you. Right. So uh, anyway, uh, I spent the year taking non-invasive non procedures and uh, still didn't get enough pain relief. So last March 4th and 8th, I had three lumbar spinal injections here in Florida. And the good news was is that uh, I had immediate pain relief. The bad news was during the operations, the three of them, I had AFib cardiac attacks. So then I uh, was kept in the hospital and I got a high degree of pneumonia. And no sooner was I coping with that and I was rushed to ER at 5 a.m. in the morning to have a twisted bowel removed from my stomach. And then I was put into an ICU unit, and my hospital roommate gave me COVID. So I was in the hospital for 12 weeks. So if that fisherman didn't hook you, none of this would have happened. Well, I guess. So I was in the hospital 12 weeks. See, fishing is a dangerous <laughs> sport. Fishing and cycling do not mix. So, uh, so then I was released uh, for home May 27th. I had uh, five weeks of home care. And then uh, between the summer and October, I had 30 PT appointments. Physical therapy. Yeah, and uh, I uh, am still trying to, to recover. And so it was very clear that uh, I was not gonna get my balance back for a road bike. So I sold my high-end specialized Robay S-Work road bike, and uh, I sold it in, uh, in uh, the fall. I sent for a recumbent trike from Germany. So you sold a top-of-the-line road bike, yeah. which was worth, what, seven grand? Uh, yeah, I, I, I sold it for $5,000. And then you took that money, and you bought an equally high-end Recumbent trial. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm still trying to recover. And uh, 
Uh, don't have a lot of strength. I can't uh, bend down too far and so forth. But I can get aboard my recumbent trike, and I can get out on the road with my recumbent trike. The drawback here is living on the east coast of Florida, there are no uh, old rail trails that are long and wide, safe and secure. Again, we're in Boca Raton. If we went all the way north to, say, uh, Tampa, Clearwater, Inverness, Tallahassee, wonderful trails there. But down here, it's a desert when it comes to uh, rail trails. You hear that? Railtrail.org? <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, but during all this whole period, uh, because I had read these first books on bicycle touring, mm -hmm. I started to collect touring books. So there's a sh five shelves there. They're all touring books. Uh, there are more than 800 touring books. Uh, I've got them uh, cla classified four ways. The classic books are 1879 to 1919. Then I have vintage books from 1920 to 1959. Then I have modern Turin books from 1960 to 1999. Some of those books are older than me. And then I have contemporary Turing books from 2000 to 2023. Uh, and then in my other room, my study, I have five more shelves of books on cycling. Uh, I have a shelf on history of cycling. Uh, I have a shelf of books on novels about cycling. I have two books, uh, two shelves on professional uh, cycling. Uh, I've got a, a shelf on uh, what I call veal, veal philosophy or philosophy of cycling. I've got a shelf now, which I've just begun, on uh, recumbent. Uh, trikes. That's and, a new shelf. And cycling. That's a new shelf. How many books on recumbents do you have? Uh, not many. I've just, just started. I've, I've, I've got about, about a dozen. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, that's probably a dozen more than I have. Yeah, you know, and then I've got a shelf on uh, bicycle uh, training and bicycle repair and, and, and so forth. So you know, I have 10, 10 bookshelves on cycling. Yeah. And I'll vouch for he has two boxes full of miscellaneous bike parts in his garage. <laughs> so that's that's in brief. <laughs> well, sure. Um, so um, what's your top speed now on your trike? Well, uh, it's only about eight or nine miles an hour. Uh, one, because I, I'm not in condition. But two, uh, here in this little um, complex I live in, uh, every, every, uh, every little road is filled with speed bumps. So in fact, you can't get more than... Well, the, the, the sign says you could ride 25 miles an hour over the speed bump. Uh, right. <laughs> not, not, not with a recumbent trike. <laughs> or at least not my recumbent trike. Oh, uh, his trike. It's got front suspension, rear suspension, Schwabby tires, it's a beautiful machine. Maybe we'll take a picture of it later. <laughs> I lust for his bike. It's a wonderful yeah. bike. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, great. So uh, why don't we take a look at some of the books? Okay, sure. I've got some first editions here that right now are not for sale anywhere in the world, going back to the 1879. Uh, and... Uh, I see that some uh, uh, are worth quite a bit. Here's a book on pedals, politics, and people from Australia, signed by the author. And as you can see, it's now being sold for more than 1,000 US dollars. Wow. So I, I do have some very, very uh, rare books, uh, as well as uh, my very, very common books. Uh, so let's go through, uh, what, what's your most favorite? Obviously, that's your most favorite book. Uh, <laughs> what else do you uh, fancy here that you'd like to share? Uh, something I'm planning to write a paper on. I've got a shelf here of books, uh, what, what I call wartime uh, es es uh, escapades. So World War I, uh, World War II, these are accounts of people on cycles. 
that we're trying to uh, escape or trying to uh, uh, report, uh, just all sorts of, of tales during the wartime period on, on bikes. Uh, this, this one is quite well known now. It's an Italian book, The Road to Valor, where there was a well-known, famous Italian uh, cyclist that did so much uh, to protect uh, Jewish people and so forth uh, during World War II. Uh, so this was written about him just a couple of years ago on Road to Valor. Uh, but I've got books that go back to, to, World, to, uh, to, to World War I. And then up, up on top, I've got a collection. Uh, here's uh, my most famous portrait. At age 77, I cycled to the top of Mont Ventoux. Where's that? It's a, a famous uh, mountain in Provence. Uh, Mont Ventoux, uh, more times than not, is part of the Tour de France. And you might see here, my jersey is uh, the Red Lantern. Uh, now, you may not know what the Red Lantern is. No. Okay. I know the Green Lantern. Okay, now going back to uh, 1905, the, the last person, the last day of the Tour de France was given the Red Lantern, or Lantern Rouge. Uh, somewhere, I, oh here, I've got a book on the uh, history of the Lantern Rouge, or, or the... Uh, the Red Lantern, and uh, because of my age and, and everything else, I refer to myself as the Red Red Lantern. This set of books here is all on cycling in New Zealand, where I lived for eight years, and my wife and I both had dual New Zealand citizenship. Now, this set of books is from Land's End to John O'Groats, from the Oops. southern part of England to uh, the tip of Scotland. It's, it's a very famous uh, bike tour in England from Land's End to John O'Groats. And this is a whole set of books on those that have done the tour, including uh, a couple on recumbent trikes. Ah, so where's your recumbent collection? Uh, it's a very, very small one. Uh, 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 More books. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the recumbent direction. Very small. Well, I also noticed all of the bicycle art that yeah. you have. That's been fun. All about your study here. Yeah. And we got some more over here. Oh, there's another picture. You didn't talk about this. Yeah. It's what a, do we have up here? Yeah, it's a tour from my, Mallorca, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> And there's the Red Lantern. And we have some more bicycle art up on top of this bookshelf. I think he's got bicycle on the brain here. <laughs> so what's this picture? It's uh, a mountain in, uh, my, in, in, in Mallorca, my very first bicycle tour. Looks like you're having fun. Oh yeah, it was tremendous. And we have a huge collection of artifacts from New Zealand, which have absolutely nothing to do with cycling. No, 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 those aren't from New Zealand. No? The, th the three plates, the three plates and this wooden figure here uh, are from Mexico. Uh, a couple of pieces from Korea. Uh, no, it's just, we, we, we have a real mix of antiques. John has the most eclectic home I have ever seen with all these masks from where? West Africa. West Africa. That should scare away any would-be robber crook in the middle of the night. Now here, here, Joel. What do we have here? More masks from West Africa on the wall. And, okay. 
<laughs> and we're back on the couch just uh, to wrap things up. John, this has been a, a pleasure uh, talking about you being all over the world, uh, cycling and touring and collecting uh, antiques and artifacts. Anything you'd like to add uh, to the people out there? Uh, not really. I hope I couch things in the right terms. <laughs> well, I just wanted to present to everyone, doesn't matter how old you are, if you keep cycling, uh, you're going to stay pretty young and uh, have a long life. And let's see, you're 84 now? 84, yeah. When do you turn 85? July 6th, I'll be 85. Think you'll make it to 120? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 Maybe 99? Yes, right. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks very much for joining us. Please, if you found this interesting, leave a comment below. I'll be sure to pass it on to John, and maybe uh, he'll uh, respond to some of your questions. And uh, again, uh, I have many, many clients with uh, my work on mobile bike repair and recumbents and uh, with uh, Get Back Trikes. And I think John is right up there with one of my most interesting <laughs> Um, people I work for. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Joel. <laughs> thanks very much, Sean. And uh, thanks for lunch, too. We went to Ben's Delicatessen. If you're ever up here, shameless plug, if you're ever up in the Boca Raton area, go to Ben's Delicatessen, best kosher delicatessen south of uh, New York City. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>